Hey, Pretty Girl Club. Welcome to another episode of the Decentering Men series. And this episode is about nesting, men who are the nesting partners. Uh, I do think that in some cases of some of these soft life or hypergamy channels, they are kind of promoting the woman being the nesting partner. But I noticed that whenever a woman is a nesting partner, she's most likely dealing with a non-monogamous man. So for example, maybe you are living in his mansion and you are married to him, but when he's out playing in the NBA or on his business trips, he is out cheating on you. He is out with his side chicks. He is out spending thousands of dollars on escorts and sex workers. But before I get into that, let's get into this because I didn't actually know that a nesting partner was like an official term. Like people actually use this in psychology and sociology. So I did see over on Bourbon Bougie's channel. I really like her channel. You guys should subscribe. She talks a lot about this stuff. Um, I, I hear them talking about guys who are nesting and resting. So I thought it was more of like a slang term, but no, when I was doing my research for another video that I was recording, um, by the way, be sure to check out that chart that I posted on my community page. And it talks about the non-monogamous spectrum, because by the way, there are, there are dozens of different types of non-monogamy. So as a woman, I want you to make the best and most informed decision when you get into a relationship with men, because some men will say, oh, I only want one woman. I'm monogamous. But in reality, he is only monogamous as long as he's not traveling on the road or, you know, he's following the don't ask, don't tell rule. So you don't ask him if he is looking at OnlyFans or spending money on OnlyFans or, you know, has these girls in chat rooms and discords and stuff that he's talking to on the side or these women in Facebook, Facebook groups and stuff that he's talking to. You don't ask him and then he doesn't tell you. I've noticed a lot of guys follow the don't ask, don't tell rule when it comes to their like their sexual behaviors and stuff like that. So this is how a lot of women will get into a whole entire marriage. And then they happen to see on their man's phone one day, wait a minute, he's been texting, he's been texting his ex for the past three years. Wait a minute, he's been talking to his coworker and, you know, hanging out with her every day for the last five years. And I had no idea. And this is because a lot of men are following the don't ask, don't tell form of non-monogamy. So basically, as long as she doesn't know about it, it doesn't exist. Or, you know, I'm only monogamous as long as I'm in your sight. As long as I'm in your presence, I'm monogamous. But as soon as I leave the house, I am no longer monogamous and I'm living my life as a single man. So a lot of women are living lives like this and they don't even know it. But I actually looked up this random article that I found online and it's about nesting partners. So it says, in polyamory, a nesting partner is a romantic or sexual partner who you live with. So examples would be boyfriend, girlfriend who live together, husband and wife who live together. Um, it says nesting partners can be married or unmarried, share finances, and even raise children together. It's possible to have more than one nesting partner. For instance, a three-person couple called thruples can live together as nesting partners. A lot of times women will be married and they will have a live-in nanny and they don't know that their nanny is actually a part of a thruple or like the guy is cheating with the nanny. Like a lot of times that's what's happening is the man unbeknownst to his wife, he has, you know, hired this nanny to live with them so that he can actually have someone that's living in the house that he can sleep with at any time. This is why a lot of celebrity women or women who are married to these very rich men and women who are kind of famous or, you know, they need a nanny. This is why a lot of women are very particular about who they want to be their nanny, especially if they need to have a live-in nanny because she's too busy or whatever. A lot of guys are actually nesting partners or they want to have a three person couple, meaning he wants two women, but he just doesn't tell you. He doesn't tell the wife. But anyway, um, let's look up how nesting partners work. It says nesting partners might share a home, but the intimacy can vary. So I'm actually convinced that a lot of married couples are actually just nesting partners because I recently recorded an episode about a man cave and how a lot of men use a man cave to escape from you. It's to escape from their wives. It's to escape from the duties of the children. It's to escape from having to actually talk to you and having to actually spend time with you. And why is he doing that? He's doing that because he's just a nesting partner. So it means that you just live together. You might go 50, 50 on finances and you know, you're benefiting each other financially somehow. But as far as the actual intimacy, so this is sexual intimacy or emotional intimacy that can vary. So 
it may not be as intimate as you're thinking. This is also why I say that I actually believe that a lot of married couples who have been together for 20 years, 30 years, they're not actually in love in the romantic sense. A lot of these people are just nesting partners. Even if you look at Kevin Samuel's old content, he, he used to be called the godfather of the manosphere. One of his main talking points was actually nesting partnership for men. So Kevin Samuels used to talk about how one of the main benefits of marriage is that you can retire faster. You can, you know, there, there are financial benefits for, for both couples. So Kevin Samuels followers were actually a bunch of men who were just looking for nesting partners, a woman who will help him to retire faster, a woman who will turn his house into a home. Like, so she will be cooking. She'll be doing all the decorations, making sure there are blankets and clean towels and all this other stuff. So it's just nesting. So you share a home. That's what a nesting partner is. You share a home, but the intimacy varies. So let's look up the definition of the word intimacy. The definition of intimacy is close familiarity or friendship and closeness, a private cozy atmosphere, an intimate act, especially sexual intercourse. So let's go through that entire definition. Uh, most men and women do not have close friendships, even if they are married or even if they are boyfriend and girlfriend. A lot of guys, when they pursue a woman, it's not because they think she would make a good friend. That doesn't even sound like a reason why a man would want to marry a woman or make her his girlfriend. No, a lot of men pick their girlfriends and wives based on, well, when it comes to girlfriend, it's mainly how attractive are you? You know, do I want to have sex with you? Um, do I want to be seen with you? You know, will you raise my status because I get to have you on my arm? And then oftentimes when a guy is looking for a wife for marriage, he's looking for what do you bring to the table financially? He's looking for a woman to help him. A lot of times when a guy is looking for a wife, it's because he's looking for a woman to help him with something. He wants that woman to help him to fulfill his purpose or, you know, to get his business endeavors off the ground. He's really looking for like an employee a lot of times, especially kind of the higher upper middle class businessmen. A lot of those guys are actually looking for a wife to be kind of like their first employee or their right hand man in terms of building a business. We saw this with men like Jeff Bezos. Um, so for example, with his wife, she gave up her career so she could help him build his company. And then, you know, as he got his status or whatever he wanted, then obviously he did the whole cheating stuff and all that. And same, even if you look at men like Elon Musk, same scenario where, you know, a lot of these guys who are the builders, you know how women are like, oh, you should get a builder. Okay. Well, the issue though, with a lot of builders is that when they're looking for wives and stuff, they're really looking for employees. They want you to help him to continue building. And then when he's ready to leave or cheat or whatever, or when he feels like he has enough power so that his sexual desirability has gotten to the level that he wants it to get to, a lot of those guys will then leave that woman or cheat or, you know, as soon as you get old or gain a few pounds or you get sick, then that guy will leave you. And so the benefit of being a nesting partner for men, that's a, that's a tremendous benefit because if he has a woman who is giving him a discount on bills and she is doing all of the domestic duties, now that man has freed up his time to actually pursue his passions because the woman is sacrificing her passions so that she can help him to build his nest. So a lot of times, um, it says that the definition of a nesting partner is you live together, but the intimacy can vary. So you may not have a close friendship with the person that you live with. How many of you guys have heard the term, oh, oh, they argue like a married couple? Well, yeah, that's because a lot of married couples, they don't actually have a close friendship, which is the definition of intimacy. So they don't have the emotional intimacy um, that comes with being married. They're just nesting partners. So they just live together. So that's why they just argue the whole time and stuff because they're just nesting partners and that's it. So either he's nesting or she's nesting, or maybe they're both nesting going 50-50 or whatever. They felt like they couldn't live that that life without that person. This is why I actually promote independence. A lot of guys, they don't want a woman to be independent. They want you to be codependent. They want you to be codependent on him. And then a lot of men, they will say, oh, well, you can be interdependent, but why would I be interdependent with a man? A lot of men are not trustworthy enough for you to be interdependent. That means both of you can depend on one another. A lot of guys, they don't even have the follow through in order to make a good interdependent partner. A lot of women can depend on other women more than they can depend on their own husbands and stuff. Like I recently saw this TikTok where somebody was talking about how she tried to ask her husband to get a storage unit and he like wouldn't get the storage unit. And so all of these other wives were chiming in and they were saying, 
Well, the way to get your husband to do something if he didn't follow through the first time is you have to ask him in the correct tone and you have to make sure that you talk to him in a way that is inspiring and that inspires him to want to do things for you. So you have to talk to him like, hey baby, do you think you can get the storage unit? So you have to try to come up with some fake tone or some different like speaking voice so that you can talk to the man to essentially emotionally manipulate him into doing something. But it's like, if I have to spend the next 80 years of my life coming up with different tones in my voice and different inflections and different sentence structures. And if I have to turn in to a freaking inspirational speaker, if I have to turn into Joel Osteen or Tony Robbins or some inspirational person just to get a man to do simple tasks, that's a waste of my time. But anyway, back to the whole concept of nesting partners. It says on this article that um, some nesting partners may not have sex at all, or they may only engage in sex in specific situations. Once again, a lot of marriages are like this, where they only engage in sex at certain times. Like it has to be maybe a special occasion or a birthday because the intimacy is just not there. The sexual intimacy is not there. The sexual attraction is not there. Don't even get me started on how a lot of men don't even have a good diet and workout regimen, especially married men. Like after they have married you and after you've had their kids and they already got you, a lot of men don't even have a good... Um, like workout routine and health routine. So a lot of guys, they're not even looking good to the point where the woman even wants to have sex with him. But it also says on here, nesting partners can be married, but they don't have to be. So a lot of boyfriend, girlfriend couples who live together and stuff, um, oftentimes it's the man who is really looking to be the nesting partner. So we all know how most men live. A lot of men do not even live a high quality level of life. Like even if the man makes a good salary or let's say he has $50,000, $60,000, $70,000, $80,000 and he has his own house, that house still doesn't compare to how a woman's house would look. A lot of men, they're, they're over here like they have dust all on their blinds, you know, their, their sheets, they rarely wash their sheets and blankets. A lot of these guys are out here using one ply toilet paper. They're not putting anything in their house that even makes it smell good. So you walk through the door and like you can smell the garbage that hasn't been taken out since yesterday. And a lot of guys, they're not spending a bunch of time like sweeping and mopping their floors and doing all of these different things like organizing their seasonings and stuff. So you can see like exactly what's in the cabinet. A lot of these guys, they don't even have like lighting in their cabinets or anything. They don't have organized organizers of any kind. So when it comes time to cook, this guy is over here messing up the entire kitchen, trying to find like, oh, where are the seasonings? You know, where's the flour? Where's the sugar? Where's all this stuff? And it's because his whole pantry is like super disorganized. A lot of guys, they're not even skilled at things like grocery shopping. They don't know how to even make a grocery list of like, okay, these are the meals I'm going to cook this week. Or, you know, these are the nutrients that I need. I'm trying to grow out my hair or I'm trying to have my skin look good. You know how a lot of us as women, we will have goals like, okay, I want to lose weight. I want to go low carb. I want to do keto. I want higher protein. I want to balance my hormones. And a lot of us women will come up with a whole entire like little diet plan or like a mini nutritional diet plan for ourselves. And then we will go to the grocery store and, you know, make our little list or whatever and get our produce, or we will go to the farmer's market or a local market that we know has cheaper produce so that we can have more vegetables. And a lot of women, we will come home, we'll chop up our vegetables and stuff and kind of like meal prep. But a lot of guys do not have those same domestic skills. Most men lack uh, domestic skills in general because of how they were socialized. A lot of young boys are not socialized to have a lot of uh, home ec skills like cooking or cleaning or, you know, like organizing, decorating, making sure that your space is like clean and free of mold and free of dust and free of allergens and toxins and making sure that the cleaning supplies you're using are not making your stuff even more toxic. A lot of guys, they're not over here like cleaning and scrubbing out their showers and stuff like that. So the benefit for a man to have a partner is better because he gets to nest while that woman is the one who is kind of keeping the home and making sure that he comes home and it smells good and there's stuff cooking on the stove and all that. And think about this. A lot of men, when it comes to their living situations, 
they don't spend the weekends the same way that the average woman does, right? The average man's hobbies are things like video games, porn, and pursuing women. And so women, a lot of us will, let's say it's the weekend. I know that for me, if it's the weekend and I'm by myself, I will be over here going to the grocery store. I'm going to get something to cook on my slow cooker, or I'll put something in the rice cooker because you can cook stuff other than rice in a rice cooker. I'll get stuff to put in the air fryer, or you know, I'll start mixing stuff or uh, making my own little smoothie these and making my overnight oats. A lot of guys, they're not spending their time like that in the home. So a lot of men are actually looking to be a nesting partner with a woman because it benefits him financially. He also has a free employee if he wants to build some sort of business or, you know, do his side hustle. And then he gets to benefit from the woman like cooking all of these slow cooked nutritious meals. So now he didn't have any edges before. He was balding before and fat and had a beer belly. But now since he's got a woman cooking for him, his skin is clearing up. His diabetes disorder is under control. His blood pressure is looking healthier. His beer belly is going down. His silver hairs are going away because he's got the proper nutrition. His hair is looking all shiny and thick. Eyes, the whites of his eyes are looking better and he is feeling himself now. Now he has built up the physical appearance to go out and pursue another woman and get a side chick. So a lot of guys are actually looking to be a nesting partner. And it also says on this article, nesting partners can raise kids together. Some nesting partners might live with their children, raising them together as a family. I did another episode about how a lot of men, they're looking for a stepmommy. They're looking for a younger woman oftentimes to come into their life and to be the, you know, the person who is taking care of the nest for his children and for himself. And then in turn, he gets to have access to two women. He has access to his baby mama and he also has access to his wife. And, you know, a lot of guys, um, they will still have sexual access to their baby mamas or cheat with the baby mama because a baby mama is one of the only other women that most women will allow the guy to still contact or still text or talk on the phone or whatever. So a lot of guys will take advantage of this. These are the don't ask, don't tell guys on the spectrum, or they may have another, um, another strategy that they're using to cheat, such as maybe he will go on a business trip or even lie and say that he's going on a business trip and he won't take any pictures or show you anything about the business trip. You know, he'll just go on the trip. And then meanwhile, he might be out with his baby mama or out with some other woman or hiring escorts or spending your 50, 50 money. You know, since, since you gave him a discount on bills, now he's got extra money freed up to spend on escorts and sex workers. It also says nesting partners can be primary or anchor partners. Wow. I love that term anchor partners because I actually believe that 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 is what a lot of men are looking for their wives and girlfriends to be is really you're just his anchor partner. Um, especially if that guy has been married for 30, 40, 50 years, a lot of times that wife, she's just his anchor partner. So these guys, um, it says on here, a primary partner is for you to prioritize over others. For instance, you might be more romantically involved with a primary partner or see them much more often. This is the case with a lot of men. A lot of the uh, customers for sex workers and stuff are married men. So they have their anchor partner, their wife, and you will be cooking and cleaning in the other room. And he is in his man cave talking to his sexual partners or the woman that he really wants or the woman that honestly, I don't really believe in the concept of a man having a dream girl because a lot of men are so fickle and don't know what they want. So it's, I kind of feel like a man doesn't even know what his own personal dreams are in life. So how would he even know what his dream girl is? Like, no, most men will take anything that comes to them or, you know, if you look at a man's porn history, oftentimes it'll have plenty of different phenotypes of girls or races, body types, heights, etc. So, but anyway, a lot of men are looking for you to be his primary partner, his anchor partner. So yeah, sure. He might take you on a date once a month. Yeah, he lives with you. And this is also why a lot of guys, they'll say, I'm here, ain't I? I'm here with you. You know how women will get mad like, hey, why are you looking at that other girl's butt? Or why are you like texting your ex or whatever? And guys, their response will often be, well, I'm here with you, right? So for a lot of men, simply them having their physical presence with you and being physically present in your life is enough. That is their definition of love, I've noticed. It's, oh, I'm just physically here. Like I just, I live here with you, so that means I love you. 
It has absolutely no emotional context a lot of times when a guy says he loves a woman because oftentimes guys will express more emotions towards a sex worker or towards women that they're attracted to. You know, a lot of guys, they'll get angry and inflamed and leave a whole paragraph comment under my videos. And it's like, dude, you probably haven't even texted your girlfriend a paragraph text message ever, or you probably never even had a girlfriend. So a lot of times guys' emotional attachment will be to women who are not even their, girl, their girlfriends, not even their wives. And so a lot of men are actually looking to be nesting partners. And also on this article, it says, is a nesting partner right for you? So for example, um, it says, are you comfortable sharing finances, discussing boundaries, and resolving conflicts by talking things through? Do your partners feel the same way? If so, then having a nesting partner or several might work for you. So are you willing to share finances with a guy? Ladies, are you willing to share a living space with him? Are you willing to give him a discount on bills so that he can afford a big enough house to have his own man cave while you simultaneously don't have a woman cave? Are you willing to do this? And on this article, it also says, remember that relationships change over time. Partners grow closer, break up, move in, move out, and so on. You will have to work closely with your partners to adjust to changes as they occur. And this is actually a big thing that a lot of people don't realize when they get married, because married is supposed to be until death do your part, or like that's how society sees it. But a lot of times men will specifically wait until they are already married to you and then they start showing their behinds and then you start finding out everything. Then you find out how much debt they actually have. Then you find out their money habits and what they tend to spend their money on. I've also noticed that there is this uh, stereotype about women being shopaholics and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that women can't be shopaholics, but I've been in relationships in my past where a lot of times the guy is like double the amount of a shopaholic than me because the guy will, he'll have more money than me. And a lot of guys will spend money on electronics. So first of all, that is way more expensive. They'll spend money on like electronics or like expensive tennis shoes and stuff. Meanwhile, I'm over here spending money on Fashion Nova and Shein and Sephora, you know, just getting $200 worth of supplies at Sephora. But a lot of guys, you won't even find out their spending habits until you start sharing finances with him. But anyway, what do you ladies think about nesting partners? Do you think that most men are actually just looking for a nesting partner or they're just looking for an anchor partner or a primary partner or a soft landing for when they get rejected by the hot girl at work, you know, then at least they have their wife to come home to? What do you ladies think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.